Okay, I'd like to talk about a couple of publications that don't really get a lot of press. Uh, the first is the Philosopher's Magazine, right here. This is the uh, the qu uh, quarterly for 2007, the first quarterly, featuring here the idea, certainty and doubt, is there too much of both? Plus, in praise of liberal education, uh, a scholarly art article on South Park. Is it okay to laugh at South Park? The writer takes uh, the point of view of Wolfian and Aristotelian perspectives to examine that question. And they talk a bit about blogging. The best of the philosophical blogs uh, are listed within there. And uh, there's also an article on Xenophone, the return of Xenophone as a uh, closely looked at primary source for Aristotle. Also, the American Scholar. Excellent publication. Uh, this is the first publication for uh, of the quarterly for 2007. An article on pseudo conservatism. A real conservative critiques Bush by Ethan Fishman, and also there's a, uh, a reprinting of a at least a portion of an article uh, similar in nature written about Joseph McCarthy in the 1950s. Uh, a similar question was asked back then, and we have an article written by Nick Brommel called Scooter and Me. Nick Brommel was Scooter Libby's best friend in prep school, and we also have some poetry and, and fiction as well. Um, well, the Philosopher's Magazine, issue 37, first quarter, 2007, we have in here... The Return of Xenophon, if I can find it. Actually, here's the article on South Park, Guilty Giggles. And, oh, Xenophon is in here as well. Uh, of course, we have three primary sources uh, for the life of Socrates, only three. Uh, that have survived. Of course, we have Plato, we have uh, Aristophanes, who lampooned Plato as a, as a buffoon and a charlatan in his play The Clouds. Um, and we also have Xenophon, who's been underrated over the past couple thousand years. Um, it's interesting. It's almost like 2,500 years from now, the only, uh, the only resources we have to uh, to tell us who George Bush was are three YouTube blogs from people with two very different perspectives, uh, three di very different perspectives. And anyway, here is Xenophon. That's an actual photograph. Well, it's a photograph of a statue and, and so on. And as you can see here, it's an interesting little uh, article there. In the American Scholar, again, first quarter of 2007, uh, this is winter 2007, published by Phi Beta Kappa, we have the article I mentioned. See if I, here's Scooter Libby and the author. Scooter is, uh, as you look at it, he's to the left there in the center of the screen, and the author of the article is to our left as we look at it. And that's it. Um, in this article, Scooter and Me, Nick Brommel, who, as I said, was Scooter Libby's buddy in school, um, deals with the conflict he faces as a, as a liberal, by his definition, um, English professor who is at odds with the Bush administration how is he supposed to feel? Uh, does he hope for Scooter's acquittal or his or his um, conviction? This was written a month or so ago, and he goes back and forth here. Toward the end, he answers his own speculation, and I'll quote. 
So, to turn to the question before me, as the day of Scooter's trial draws near, I try to commit myself to these liberal principles in my private life, just as I have argued for their value in our public life. They encourage me to remain aware at all times of the irreducible human complexity of Scooter's life and work. They encourage me to think of him as a person and a friend, and not as a figure and a foe. While I want the Bush administration to be held accountable for its blunders and its lies, I also want my friend Scooter to be proven innocent and to go home to his family. In short, I want things both ways. If this attitude involves me in self-contradiction, so be it. The risk of a seeming inconsistency is one that liberals must take if we are to meet the complexities of the world as we know it. But we should undertake this risk agonizingly, not flippantly, taking the full measure of what is at stake as we make up our minds. Uh, another interesting observation he has in here, he talks about the, uh, the clash of well, Samuel Huntington's class, Clash of Civilizations paradigm. He says, quote, Samuel Huntington's Clash of Civilizations feels more like a clash of different fundamentalisms. And it is, and that is the dynamic through which fundamentalism prevails. It wins by controlling the terms of the engagement and forcing its opponents to become fundamentalists themselves. And that's the, uh, the issue we, we wrestle with. Uh, those of us who, who claim a, a liberal perspective, that is an I the idea that we do not have the truth. There are many truths. Some are true for a time. Um, against those fundamentalists, that is those who take an absolute moral certainty, the truth, and with that um, are motivated to do just about anything. It is uh, the question we face, how do we in our opposition not become as rigid and dogmatic as, as they are? And it's an interesting question. Also, uh, Nick Brommel's father, he goes on to talk about in the article, his father was, in Scooter and Me, his father was a career diplomat in the Middle East and he's very upset by the Valerie Plame incident and so on, which appears that uh, Scooter Louie lied about, and indeed the Vice President's office. Um, many people have made a lot over the, the question of whether Valerie Plame was a covert agent or not, and this, this may have some legal significance. I'm, uh, I don't, I'm not necessarily sure it does, but it very well may. Um, certainly there's there is a moral issue here which goes beyond that. Um, I'll leave with a quote from Montaigne or Montagna, if you are Italian. On lying, 300 years ago he said, Lying is indeed an accursed vice. We are men and we have relations with one another only by speech. If we recognize the horror and gravity of an untruth, we should more justifiably punish it with fire than any other crime. And to continue, if, like the truth, falsehood had only one face, we should know it better where we are, for we should then take the opposite of what a liar said to be the truth. But the opposite of the truth has a hundred thousand shapes and a, a limitless field. The Pythagoreans regard good as certain and finite and evil as uncertain and infinite. There are a thousand ways of missing the bullseye and only one of hitting it. Thanks.